Hi, it's Alessio. Hope you're well. Many of you have been asking me, hey Alessio, what is the likely impact of the Russia-Ukraine crisis on the major markets? For example, the major stock markets. What could a potential war or conflict between Russia and Ukraine mean for the markets? What does history say about this? Plus also, I'm going to show you this chart and explain to you what this potentially means for us as well. Join me. All right, guys, welcome back. Now, as I'm sure you know, the mainstream media and the financial news media have been trying to say that the reason or cause for the crash in the stock markets lately has been due to the Russia-Ukraine crisis. However, if you've been following our member videos, then you will know that we've been anticipating this drop in the stock markets for several weeks since mid-January. So this correction in the stock markets has not been surprising to us. It is something we have been expecting. So the first thing I want to say in this video is this. The belief that the news causes the price action in the markets, which is called mechanism or a mechanistic explanation of the markets, is wrong. It is false. Let me give you an example. As you know, when the markets crashed recently, when we saw this decline here, all the financial news media were saying it is because Russia invaded Ukraine. That's what they were saying, that Russian troops invaded Ukraine and that caused the stock market to drop. Now, look at this major rally here, the strong bounce in the stock markets in the last couple of days. Let me ask you this question. Did the Russian troops pull out of Ukraine? Did Putin order the Russian troops to leave Ukraine? Is that what happened? No. The situation over there has become even worse. And the financial news media cannot explain why the stock market has gone up and rallied despite the bad news. So their response is basically this. <laughs> exactly. Thank you, Kyle. By the way, in case you're thinking, well, maybe the price went up because of capitulation or maybe a reversion to the mean or a dead cat bounce, well, at least now you're thinking like a technical analyst, which is a good thing. So you have to decide whether you want to be a fundamental analyst or a technical analyst, because if you care more about the news than you do about the charts, then you're not a technical analyst. You're a fundamentalist. So this is my point. The news is not the cause for price action. It is the effect. Don't take my word for it. Listen to what the excellent chart analyst Robert Prechter says in this video. The, the work we do is so different from what other people do that sometimes it can feel foreign to people. Uh, most people look at news and events and so-called fundamentals to decide yeah. where markets are going. I actually think those are not causes, that the, uh, they're actually results. Yeah. I actually think those are not causes, that the, uh, they're actually results. Yeah. That markets are buffeted by waves of social mood. Yeah. That those changes in social mood are endogenously regulated. And what that means is it arises naturally from human interaction. Yeah. Um, people become more optimistic for a period of time. They become more pessimistic uh, for a period of time. But I think people using the fundamentals are mostly lost because the fundamentals lag what the market is actually doing. Thank you guys for watching that. Robert Prechter is right. The news is the effect, not the cause. As Bernard Baruch once said, show me the charts and I will tell you the news. In other words, people want to find explanations and causes for why the market has done something. And they mistakenly assume that the news caused the market prices to go up or go down. In reality, what causes price action is social mood, human emotions and irrational behavior. So for example, desire, greed, euphoria, fear, uncertainty, and panic. These are what causes price action. Now, you might say, well, Alessio, surely the news causes those behaviors and emotions, right? Not necessarily. You see, the news gets processed by the human brain. The human brain, as you know, is a chaotic system, which means it is nonlinear, unpredictable, and sensitive to initial conditions. So there's no way we can predict with accuracy that a certain news will cause a certain behavior. We cannot know with certainty whether some news will bring about a positive, negative, or a neutral response. There is no way to predict the outcome. And because the human brain is chaotic and unpredictable, this explains why the markets are also chaotic and unpredictable. Okay, let's go back to the charts now. This chart is courtesy of Jason Geppert of Sentiment Traders, a fascinating chart. It's called the Equity Market Related Economic Uncertainty Index. It's a mouthful, I know. Let's just call it the Uncertainty Index. It shows the level of uncertainty in the markets for the past four decades. Now, pay close attention to the blue line here, which shows the spikes in uncertainty. Notice when the blue line goes above the 500 level. Here's the 500 level on this chart. Okay, now look at the spikes here when the uncertainty goes above 500. That's the red line you see in the chart. For those of you who want some context, I've also labeled for you on the chart what was happening around the time of each signal. For example, take a look at this spike over here in 1987. That was Black Monday when the stock markets had a severe crash, a massive spike in uncertainty, as you can see here. Same happened after the crash in 1998, another spike 10 days after 9-11. 
then another one in 2011 during the Eurozone crisis, then the most recent one happened at the start of the COVID pandemic in March 2020, notice the spike over 500, and now the most recent one around the time of the Russia-Ukraine crisis, a spike in uncertainty. Okay, now look at this data over here, also courtesy of Jason Geppert. Notice what happened after each of these signals. In other words, what happened after the spike in uncertainty over the 500 level that we saw there? You will see that in the short term, so in the next couple of weeks or month, the results were actually quite mixed. Some were positive, some were negative, a lot of volatility overall. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Look at the returns in the stock market for the next two to three to six months. Notice that the returns or results for the next two to three months were very positive, with a median return of 14 to 18%. And six months later, it was still good. The return was 17%. For example, in 2020, six months later, the stock market was up 44%, as you can see here. So how do we interpret these results? Well, here's what Jason Geppert says. He says, the chart clearly shows that the index seemed to be a useful indication of uncertainty. When mainstream newspapers find it necessary to publish articles related to the stock market, it's almost always because of declines and scary headlines. The other signals coincided with larger price declines in the S&P 500, and the sample size is tiny. But it's at least worth noting that each of them preceded substantial rallies over the next two to six months. So what Jason is saying here is, look, we're dealing with a small sample size here. We've only had about five signals in the past 40 years. So we have to be careful and cautious about interpreting these results. There is always a risk that maybe this time it's different. Maybe this time around it won't be positive. Anything is possible. However, as Jason says, this data is very useful. It's a useful indication of uncertainty. And every time there is panic and uncertainty, the news media publish scary headlines, as they've done recently. There is always drama and panic in the news media. As Jason says, if you look at the data, historically, every time this signal has occurred, like the spike in uncertainty over 500, it has preceded substantial rallies over the next two to six months. So in the short term, in the next few weeks or month, there could still be a lot of volatility and risk. So we need to be cautious. But if history is a guide, then it shows that there's a higher probability that the next two to six months are likely to be positive and potentially bullish for the stock markets. We also need to remember that as the German philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche warned us, it is dangerous to follow the herd. The herd are usually on the wrong side. Nietzsche invented this word, the Ubermensch or the Superman, meaning that we should try and become a better version of ourselves. Nietzsche teaches us that instead of following herd mentality like everybody else, we should try and think for ourselves and not be afraid of doing this. So looking back at this chart, the S&P, we've had a very strong bounce in the last two days. It's a beautiful rally, and it could be a positive sign. But we also need to remember that two days does not make a new trend. So let's be patient and see if an uptrend now develops. For example, a higher low. All right, guys, thank you very much indeed. Make sure you watch the member video tomorrow on Sunday as we shall continue the announcement in the stock markets with Elliott Waves as well. If you're not a member, you can join on that link you see right there. Thank you very much indeed. Bye for now.